Hello lads, good morning. Welcome to our channel Time to Cram. Till now, in metals and non-metals, we have learned that what are metals, non-metals and semi-metals. Also, we have learned in our previous video lecture about physical properties of metals. Now, in today's video lecture, we are going to learn about physical properties of non-metals. Before coming to actual topic, I want to give a recap about what we have learned till now. So, this is a chart in which we can show that what we have learned till now. Metals, non-metals and semi-metals. Uh, what are the properties of non-metals? In that we have learnt metallic luster, hardness, malleability, ductility, uh, high melting point of metals. Uh, they are also the good conductors of electricity and sonorous. Yeah, I know the properties of non-metals is empty because till now we haven't learned about what are the properties of non-metals. So let's begin with our actual topic properties of non-metals. In 3.7 the activity asked us to do is carry out the activities 3.1 to 3.4 and 3.6 with these non-metals and record your observations. The activity asked us to do is carry out the activities 3.1 to 3.4 and 3.6 with these non-metals and record your observations. The non-metals are graphite, coal, sulfur and iodine. Also compile your observations regarding metals and non-metals in table. You don't have to worry about the activities as we have done it for you and also we have compiled the observation table so the observation table here is of graphite coal sulfur and iodine now let's differentiate physical properties among coal graphite sulfur and iodine now the symbol for graphite and coal is c and whereas sulfur for s and iodine for i now maybe you will get a question that why graphite and coal have the same symbol but sulfur and iodine have different symbols because sulfur and iodines are the elements okay and graphite and coal are not the element but they are the product of the elements so the mother element here is carbon and the symbol c represents for carbon okay which type of surface do these non-metals have they all have uh, non-lustrous okay and there is no surprise in it because we have learned that metals have lustrous whereas non-metals have non-lustrous because everything is exactly opposite between metals and non-metals now graphite and coal are hard but sulfur and iodine are soft now maybe you will get confused that why graphite and coal have hardness in which they should have softness because the properties of hardness belong to metals and now this is a contradictions we will learn more about contradictions and exceptions in our next topic now come to the property of malleability graphite coal sulfur iodine they do not have malleability when you will hammer them they will totally break into pieces they will not bend into any sheets now ductility they do not have any property of ductility they can't be drawn into wires but graphite have the property of, of conducting electricity whereas coal sulfur and iodine do not have yeah i know that graphite is also an exception about electricity and we will we will going to learn that what are the contradictions and exceptions as i told you earlier now conducting heat they do not conduct heat it means that the molecule in of graphite, coal, sulfur, iodine doesn't transfer heat from one molecule to another molecule. Okay. Now it's time to understand what are the contradictions and exceptions. Now I have wrote about five contradictions and exceptions. Okay. There are more of it, but we are going to discuss just five of it for now. If you have any doubt in any contradictions or uh, exceptions, let us know in our comment section. We are happy to help you here. Okay. There are some more contradictions and ex exceptions. But for now, we are just going to understand about these five because these are the most important five. Now, the first contradiction is not all metals are solid. This is the most important contradiction because we have discussed that every metal should be a solid. They can't be liquid or gas. So the exception is all metal except mercury exist as liquid at room temperature. Okay. Second contradiction is most of the metals have high melting point but some metals have low melting point i have told you that iron has the highest melting point and metals should have high melting point but there are some metals which have low melting point and the exception for it is in activity 3.5 we have learned that metals have high melting point but gallium and cesium have very low melting points these two metals will melt if you keep them on your palm so try to understand that how sensitive these metals are we have also learned about lustres and we know that lustrous is a property of a metal not about not of non-metal but you can see here that there is a contradiction that non-metals can be lustrous and the exception for it is iodine is a non-metal but it is lustrous the fourth contradiction here is non-metals can have high melting points like metals the exception for it is that 
carbon is a non metal that can exist in different forms we have discussed there graphite and coal are one of the forms of carbon each form is called an allotrope diamond an allotrope of carbon is the hardest natural substance known and has a very high melting and boiling point graphite another allotrope of carbon is a conductor of electricity we have discussed it earlier that graphite can conduct electricity now fifth last but not the least not all metals have hardness that every metal does not exist in a alkali metals like lithium sodium potassium are so soft that they can be cut with a knife so you can understand sensitivity of this topic that there are so much contradictions and exceptions okay first you have to understand each and every properties of metals and non metals and also you have to memorize their contradictions and exceptions because these are two important they have low densities and low melting points coming back to our topic physical properties of non metals we will continue this topic with the uh, with the help of activity 3.8 what 3.8 ask us here is that take a magnesium ribbon and some sulfur powder now the next step for it is that burn the magnesium ribbon and collect the ashes formed you can see on your screen that there is a diagram of how we are going to burn the magnesium ribbon now the third step here is that add water to the ashes collected this is how we will pour the water now the fourth a uh, fourth step is test the solution with red litmus paper and blue lit litmus paper the conclusion of this activity is that red litmus paper is turned into blue it means that the solution of magnesium hydroxide is basic so we can conclude here that each and every metals when we will react them with oxygen they are going to give us the basic solution basic oxide now the conclusion of activity is that most of the metals give rise to basic oxides they will be alkaline and their nature will be basic now the chemical reaction for the uh, for this activity is that when you add one uh, one atom of magnesium to the two atoms of uh, oxygen it will form 2 mgo this is the balanced balanced reaction you can see in uh, you can see on your screens now uh, further you uh, what you will do that uh, you will take magnesium oxide with water water and uh, and the and the product will be magnesium hydroxide you have to memorize this reaction let's do this activity with the help of non metals So the first step will be burn sulfur powder. Place a test tube over the burning sulfur to collect the fumes produced. Okay. Then add some water to the above test tube and shake. This is sulfur dioxide. Now the third step will be test the solution with red and blue litmus paper. So the conclusion of the previous activity will be that blue litmus paper will turn into red. It means that the solution of sulfuric acid is acidic. Most non-metal produce. acidic oxide when dissolve in water so from this activity we will conclude that each and every metal will uh, will give us basic oxides and every non metal will give us acidic oxides in case of metals the blue litmus uh, red litmus paper will turn into blue and in case of non metals blue litmus paper will turn into red this is the basics and you have to understand and also memorize this stuff this is important look the precious uh, advice i want to, to give you here is that do not take anything very seriously or very frankly okay now so here we conclude our today's video lecture before completing this i want to complete that table we have started we have started earlier the table of non metals and metals we already filled the left side part of the metal metal one now it's time to fill the non metal part so the properties of non metals are they are few in numbers okay they are soft they have softness in it they can't be ductile they have low as well as high melting points they are bad conductors of electricity except graphite we have learned they can't be sonorous they have low and high melting point examples of non metals are carbon sulfur and iodine topic which we will covering in next video lecture is chemical properties of metal thank you for watching and uh, if you have any doubt whatsoever in this topic till now you can let us know in our comment section below and uh, thank you for watching keep supporting notes are uploaded on the bloggers page of time to cram so visit the bloggers page to download the notes and the link of the bloggers is given in the description box so check the description box get the link and download the notes and If you find this video helpful and informative then like it and do share it with your friends and classmates and yet you had not subscribed to our channel time to cram then subscribe it
and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you will get latest notification and update when new video is uploaded. That's all for today's video lecture. Thank you.